Hi, I'm Dr. Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to show you how to use a uh, Viasis VMAX Encore metabolic cart in order to do a VO2 max test. This is a test to see how much uh, oxygen a person can bring into their body and use for aerobic metabolism in order to then do some sort of activity. So this is the gold standard for looking at cardiorespiratory fitness. All right, so at some point in time before strapping all the, the mouthpiece and the mask onto the person, you want to get their information entered into the system. All right, so to do that, open up the software and go to new test and then simply enter their first and last name and their, their ID number. So if this is for a research study, you're not going to put a first and last name, you're just going to put their research ID for all three of those fields. You're also going to want to put in their date of birth you're going to want to put in their gender, their race, and um, how tall they are, and how much they weigh. So in this software, anytime you're trying to store whatever's in the current dialog, uh, just hover the mouse across the bottom of the screen uh, where those, uh, those buttons are, and it'll tell you what those buttons do. So it's not very obvious with this system what each button does until you hover over it. So make sure that you um, click the one that says store and exit and that is going to get you into the screen where you can then go into the exercise test. All right, so before the participant gets there, you want to take this main air assembly piece and there's going to be uh, multiple things that get plugged into this. So we're going to have on the bottom here, there is where you're going to attach sort of a big gray uh, cord and that cord is going to be what allows you to uh, essentially sample the volume of air um, or get a measurement of volume. So it's going to plug in until it clicks. All right, so make sure that you line it up appropriately. There's only one direction that it goes in um, correctly without uh, misaligning any of the pins. So be very careful when doing that, that you're aligning the pins properly. All right, so put that in until it clicks. So there is a, a little hole on, on two, different, small, two, two small holes on each side of this that are going to have different air sampling tubes connected to that. And you'll know which one is the correct one because they will only fit in one of the holes snugly, so if you try to put it in and it falls right out, or if it doesn't go in at all, you're going into the wrong hole on the, the air piece assembly. So make sure that you just move around and, until you get it into the right place. And give it a little tiny uh, twist with a little tiny uh, bit of pressure to make sure that it's in there snugly. And then it's just a matter of plugging this into um, the rest of the air, uh, airway assembly uh, which is just pushing it in firmly until it goes in all the way. All right, and so once you have that, um, until the participant gets there, I suggest just putting it into the, the black holder that's attached to the machine. And then when the person gets there, you can take it out of that and attach it to their mouthpiece. All right, so when somebody comes into the lab in order to participate in one of these tests, first thing you want to do is size their face to see what size mask they should use. So if you look at the bottom of the mask, the, there's some uh, letters or there's some words on there and uh, somewhere in those words it's going to say if it's a small, medium, or large size mask. All right, so in order to do the sizing, you simply place the mask on their face and have them put a little pressure um, when they're doing so and then use the palm of their hand to um, uh, close off the air hole on the front of the mask and make it so they can't blow any air out of that. And then they just try to do a, sort of a light to moderate intensity uh, exhalation of their air, see if any air comes out around the mouthpiece, so around the nose, the cheeks, or underneath the jaw. All right, so once you have established the right size mask for them to wear, you're going to then put the, the head strap on the back of the head, and then you're going to have them place the mask back on their face and carefully put each strap, attach that to the front of the mask, um, and then you're going to just pull back on those, uh, those straps, pulling them tight so that the mask is held in place. Make sure while you're doing this that the, the headgear isn't shifting in one direction or, or the other. Make sure it's staying centered on the top of the head and the mask is staying centered on the front of the face. All right, and so once you have it all attached and you've pulled all those straps tight to so make sure that it's not going to go anywhere, 
um, then you're going to have them just use the palm of their hand again to cut off the air supply coming in and out of that air hole in the front of the mask and just have them do uh, again a, a sort of a moderate intensity blow to see if there's any leaks around the nose, the cheeks, or the chin. Then you're going to want to put the headgear on. So the headgear is uh, kind of like a, a, a hat where it has an adjustable um, piece that goes across the top as well as on the back. So you're going to put it on making sure that you have the, uh, uh, the back nice and tight so it fits snugly on the head and that it's straight and then you're going to take the air assembly and you're going to put it gently into the hole on the front of the mask. So make sure it goes all the way in but don't be too rough with the person while doing that and then have them hold up the front of the air assembly while you then take the, the metal rod that goes up on both sides of the headgear. You're going to take it, you're going to bring it down and you're going to clip the plastic part of the front of that metal rod onto the air assembly and then just twist the two side screws to make all that sort of stay in place tightly. All right, so once you've had it, um, have that uh, tightened down, you can have them let go and then the whole assembly is put together and you're ready then to begin your test. So with the participants information entered, you're then gonna go and click on the exercise metabolic test and then it's gonna pop something up, you're gonna click start test. From that menu, you're going to then hover across the bottom of the screen over those buttons and look for the one that says exit and begin test. The screen is going to show you the different parameters that are going to be measured during the test. At this point, just wait a few seconds, wait until you start to see some numbers popping up in those parameters. And um, once you see that, hover your mouse across the, um, the button at the bottom right of the screen and that's going to show you um, well, that's going to be the button that you're going to click in order to progress into the actual test. So at this point, you haven't really recorded any data. So once you click that button, it's going to go through a series of prompts. So you're going to want to click that until you get to the one that says baseline. And that's when you're going to start actually recording data. So first, when you're doing baseline, just have the pers person sitting uh, calmly in a chair on the treadmill and give yourself three to five minutes typically in order to record a, a nice solid baseline. So once you've recorded your baseline measurements, click back on that button at the bottom right hand side of the screen and it's going to say warm up. At that point, have the person stand up, remove the chair from the treadmill and then have them uh, get the treadmill sort of up to speed and up to the grade you want it to. Have them start to walk on that treadmill and then hit that button in the bottom right hand corner again and it's going to say exercise and that's going to be the actual start of the test. From that point forward, whatever protocol you're doing, so here we're going to be doing the Bruce protocol, which is the most common treadmill test there is in the United States at least. Um, so once you're, you're going, just do your protocol. Um, you can put comments as you go. If you click across the, the top drop down menu options, one of those is going to bring up a comment menu if, uh, if there's anything in the test that you want to just make note of. So just keep in mind that when you're doing a maximal treadmill test like what we're doing here, Oftentimes you're going to want to record heart rate, you're going to want to record blood pressure, and you're going to want to record RPE, so ratings of perceived exertion. And you'll want to do that typically every stage if it is a stage type test. If it's a ramp protocol, um, then choose regular intervals in order to do those uh, measurements. All right, so the test ends when the participant says it's over, so they go as far as they can. You encourage them, you do your best to um, give them motivation to, do, uh, as, to work as hard as they can, but they are always in control of the test. So make sure that they know before the test starts that when they want the test to be over, all they have to do is get back in the same position they were when they started, which is holding the handrails, and having their feet on the side rails of the uh, next to the belt. So for most people, you're going to notice that uh, a test like the Bruce Protocol is fairly simple at the beginning, at least for an average, reasonably healthy person. Um, but at some point in time, there, if you watch, the RQ or RER value is going to start to press over one. All right, so once it gets over one or near one, that's usually when the person starts feeling that they are getting very fatigued and it's a pretty strenuous exercise bout. So that's what I usually look for while I'm doing one of these tests. I, I look for that RQ or RER to get around one and that's when I really start to encourage them and uh, make sure that I'm really on them watching them closely. So when the person stops, uh, as long as you're not planning on recording any recovery data, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the, the menus across the top of the screen and you're going to go to the one that says exit and pause. And so once you click on that, it's going to bring up a drop down menu and click on the one that says end test.
get the headgear off them, lower the treadmill to a lower speed and lower grade, and have the person just do some recovery walking just so they can uh, keep their blood flowing and not have any blood pooling in their legs. It'll help them feel better faster as well. All right, so once they are ready and you've uh, confirmed that any of the measurements that you've been doing uh, throughout the test, like heart rate, blood pressure, if you're doing ECG, ECG, make sure all those return to near baseline levels, and then you can stop them and get them off the treadmill and have them sit down and just kind of watch them for a little while and make sure that they are okay. All right, so once you click that, it's gonna bring up other dialog boxes, and essentially all you really need to do at that point is scan across the, the buttons of the of, on the bottom of those dialog boxes and look for the ones that say store the test or um, store and exit, something like that. So it's gonna pop up multiple, just keep looking for the buttons that say something about storing the, the data um, and make sure that you click on that button so that data, so the data is saved for you to retrieve later on. So if your plan is to export this data into some sort of text file that can be put into something like Excel and analyze uh, independently of this software, you're going to get back to the desktop of the computer and you're going to click on the button that says uh, generic text uh, printer. So once you've clicked on the generic text uh, button that is on the desktop, you're going to go to the printer button and then go to set as default printer. And so that's going to make it so when you go to try to print results, it's going to save that what would have been printed as a text file. All right, so once the text file is chosen as the default printer, you're going to go back into the metabolic uh, cart software. You're going to go back into the exercise and metabolic test um, button within that software. And you're going to click on the button that says tabular, uh, tabular data or tabular edit. Um, and within that, you can then change the whatever the default is for how much time to average per, um, per, per line in your text file. All right, so it's set uh, to breath by breath data uh, initially, which is gonna be very noisy and there's gonna be a lot of very high and very low numbers and it's not very accurate. So what you're gonna wanna do is change it to be either 10 second averages, 30 second averages, so 10 seconds is generally enough, but sometimes you want something that is very, very stable, so 30 seconds. So click on one of those um, averaging options, and then just hit print, and then it's going to essentially print those results as a text file. So it's not gonna actually print a paper document, but it's going to create a text file for you. All right, so once you um, hit that print button, it's gonna bring up a dialog box to give it a, a, a file name. So we'll give it whatever file name you want it to give, click OK and then just go ahead and hit the prompts to exit all the different windows of the software and get it back to the desktop of the computer. So once back to the desktop of the computer, go to the button or the, the icon that says shortcut to vision, and that's gonna bring you to the default location where those text files are, gonna, are going to be saved. So get to that location, look for the file name that you gave it, and then my recommendation would be to copy that file uh, or copy or just drag that file out of the folder that, that that vision folder and somewhere on the desktop or into another folder where you're going to then store your results. All right, so once you've done that, you essentially have a text file. It may not be recognized as a text file, but it, it will function as a text file if you try to open it in a text editor or if you try to open it in Excel, um, then you can then look through the data and find the VO2 max of the person as well as find um, what their VO2 and several other parameters were uh, every 10 seconds because we saved it as a 10 second average file. You need to then clean off all the equipment. So um, start to unattach everything that you attached at the beginning. So you are going to remove the, the straps, the head straps from the mask. You're gonna take the air assembly off the mask and so the, the mask is eventually going to be soaked in bleach. We'll get to that in a second. The headgear is going to be either cleaned really well with some alcohol swabs or sprayed with some sort of uh, cleaning solution and rinsed. Uh, and um, the headgear that has the, the plastic straps around the, the, the head as well as the metal um, bracket that goes off of that is going to also be cleaned with alcohol or sprayed and rinsed with some sort of cleaner. All right, so the um, the the air assembly piece is going to be um, separated into all these different components. So you're going to pull off the two small sampling tubes off the sides. You're going to remove the gray cord from the bottom 
um, and that just kind of comes out uh, with a little bit of force. Front end doesn't usually get clean because it's uh, a little ways away from the person. It's not going to be uh, exposing them to anything, so that doesn't get cleaned every time. So put that to the side. That, that main assembly piece though and that mask are then going to get uh, soaked in a 10% bleach solution. So fill up your 10% bleach solution, put the mask and the main air piece in there, wait uh, about 5 to 10 minutes for that to then disinfect, pull it out and rinse it off real good to make sure there's no uh, bleach residue left on those. And then just let them air dry in some sort of uh, a drying rack. All right, so when you're doing this, make sure that you don't soak it too long because if you do excessively long soak uh, in a bleach solution, you can uh, damage the plastic or the rubber of those pieces. And then also, um, again, make sure that you rinse them really well, getting all that bleach residue off. So once you're all done, everything's cleaned up, the data's been stored um, appropriately, then your, uh, your best bet is to put a, another assembly, another air piece assembly together, get it ready for the next test um, or the next person just to, as a sort of courtesy to them. All right, and then um, after that, you're completely done with everything. The test is complete. So uh, that was a, a fairly involved process, but I hope that uh, this video was helpful to you. So if you have any questions, put the comments down below and I'll try to get back to you. Otherwise, come back and watch another video. Thanks.